Okay, let's take a look at this poem from the Journal of a Disappointed Man. I think it's a strange poem, uh, uh, and I, I need to work through it to really think about what I think. Um, the journal is, you know, these are the private written thoughts. Disappointed, something's let him down. But it's not just something, he is a man who is let down. So it's not necessarily something. I mean, maybe, maybe this is an adjective to really describe who he is as a person. Uh, and now we're going to get what happened uh, to disappoint him or make him disappointed always. I discovered these men driving a new pile into the pier. Discovered is an interesting... The verbs are really uh, getting me these days. Uh, found as if... As if as if he was the one that created them. They weren't there. It was him who's almost uncovered, discovered this. There was all the paraphernalia of chains, pulleys, cranes, ropes. And, as I said, a wooden pile, a massive affair, swinging over the water on a long wire hawser. So, the word that sticks out there is paraphernalia. This is the, um, the uh, specific props used by a craft or a hobbyist. And they're all things, you know, he doesn't know, maybe he knows about them, but um, um, they're, they're, they're very sp particular to these people's work. Okay, and I think that's one of the major themes in this poem, is what is work? And it's a massive affair, it's huge, this wooden affair, swinging over the water on a long wire hawser. Everything else was in the massive style as well, even the men, very powerful men, very rheumative and silent men ignoring me. So something, this, this, uh, he wants attention, but these men are giving this wooden pile uh, their attention, uh, and he's, he's impressed by their size, how quiet and thoughtful they seem to be. They're, they're involved in something. Um, maybe he's involved in something. Slowly we, we start to see him becoming interested in this pile. He's repeating his interest in it. He's being drawn in. Speech was not something to interest them. And if they talked at all, it was like this. Let's go. Or hold tight. All monosyllables. Nevertheless, Okay, so here we, we ourselves, as, as readers of poetry, we have to think, okay, why are we so obsessed with syllables and rhythm and lines? And he, what does he take from the fact that they just use monosyllables? He's, he's suggesting that they're simple. Maybe he's mocking them. I don't know. Maybe he's mocking them. But the key thing is they're, they're not word people. Not word people. The irony, of course, is he is a word person. This, this is his, he is a word person. He is a poet. He's someone who is trying to paint this picture in words. He's, he's trying to make it simple, but he can't do it monosyllabically like they do. Nevertheless, by paying close attention to the obscure movements of one working on a ladder by the water's edge, I could tell that for the, all their strength and experience, these men we're up against a great difficulty. So, again, you get this enjambment. You know, the thoughts go from stanza to stanza. I don't like reading this way, but you could think about the pile of wood itself swinging. But I'm going to put an unhappy face because I don't really like those types of reading. Um, what I'm more drawn to is, nevertheless, by paying close attention the obscure movements, these kind of unknown things they're doing, uh, even though strong and experienced, it's a really hard. So even though they are strong, it's still hard. It's difficult. I cannot say what, 
what, what do you mean? I cannot say what. What can't you say? What was hard? I can't say what was hard about it, maybe. Or I, I can't say something else. That's a strange line. It sticks out to me. It makes me think there's something more going on here for this man. Uh, every one of the monsters... It's a metaphor. Why are they monsters? Was silent on the subject. We hear this, their silence throughout... that they're not into words. Baffled, I thought, at first. Baffled, confused, puzzled. But then I realized, indifferent and tired. So tired of the whole business. So, that repetition emphasizes that they're, uh, they're done. They're, they're, in a way, they're giving up. They're confused, they don't know how to do this, they're giving up. Maybe, maybe, he's also reflecting the reader's feeling. What's this poem about? What the hell's going on? There's barely anything to see. Very little's happened. Um, there seems to be a preoccupation with the silence and the confusion of these monstrous large men. What the hell's going on in this poem? And I start to think now, Andrew Motion is, is, is describing labor, but it's, it's describing even his difficulty in trying to capture this moment in words. The man nearest to me, still saying nothing but crossing his strong arms over his chest, showed me that for all he cared, the pile could go on swinging until the crack of doom. So this one man is showing that he, he doesn't care uh, and this, this thing could go on until, until time is over until we all die. He just doesn't care anymore. I should say, I watched them at least an hour, and to do the men justice, to be fair, their slow efforts to overcome the secret problem did continue, then gradually slackened and finally ceased. So they tried, slackened, they're letting go. One massive, and, and you know what, for, for one hour, the speaker watches. Why? He's obsessed, he sees his own plight in trying to put a poem together. Uh, it's unclear, but there is something about this, he's caught up in it. One massive man after another abandoned his position and leaned on the iron rail to gaze down like a mystic into the river. So now the simile is there something, there's something uh, magical, holy, and again, I might think of absorbed about them in this activity. Though one fellow did spit, oh, sorry, no one spoke, again. No one said what they saw. Only who? The, the poet? Only the poet's able to do that. Though one did spit, and with round eyes followed the trajectory of his brown bolus, he had been chewing tobacco on its slow descent into the same depths. So these guys are sitting here and they spit and it comes down. That is this image. That's the only thing he seems to be able to paint. We don't get any sense of the drama. What drama is there? There's a bunch of wood hanging in the, in the air. But we get this one image. And what does this image show? It shows indifference. It's quite disgusting. Uh, the foreman and the most original thinker smoked a cigarette to relieve the tension. Another image of that smoke. Afterwards, with a heavy kind of majesty, so he's, he's royal, he's the authority, but he's heavy, suggesting, um, it's, you know, it's not a good day, it's not a good thing, what's happened. And he turned on his heel and walked away. I mean, they're not happy about it. So this is rather a simple story of some wood that can't get moved and a guy watching it with this eclipse of interest. And that word I love, the eclipse is, you know, the moon covering the sun in such a way that it covers its, its, it, it covers its, its uh, brightness, its light to the earth. So this eclipse of interest, one thing 
completely covering another. The incident was suddenly closed, so just all of a sudden it's over. First in ones and twos, then all together the men followed. That left the pile still in midair, and me of course. So they all leave, um, but the, the, the pile is stuck in the air. And he's left as well, because he's no one to these people. And again, remember, he resents that. He wants their attention. But he's almost, by the way grammatically it works, that pile's still in midair, and me, of course. They, that left the pile still in midair, and me, of course. There's a sig ambiguous suggestion. He is left in midair, too. There's no closure, no end to this story. And that's disappointing to him because of the abandonment, but it's disappointing to us too as the reader. We're left um, unsatisfied definitely with this poem. Uh, I don't think it's a great poem, but I think the, the fact that it's playing with your expectations might be part of the reason it's in this anthology, that itself is trying to describe um, the poet's attempt to, to write a poem about something that was just unfinished and, and, and to show his disappointment, to show his frustration. He's like those workers. He's obsessed. He's, he's connected to this moment. He becomes the pile of wood, strangely. Or this whole event becomes for him what it means to write a poem. All these possibilities are available to you in interpreting this poem. Um, uh, I, don't, I don't know, um, uh, I mean thematically I would connect it to any other of the poems that involve work. <laughs>